Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Shah. I'm a branding and web designer based in the UK. And today I'm gonna be making a video all about my web design process. So if you're thinking about offering web design as a new service, hopefully this will help you implement some new things into your own web design process. Before we get started, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and you find them useful, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Okay, so I'm gonna go straight into it with my first step. Now, this may seem obvious, but in order for clients to reach you, they need to have somewhere where they can contact you, whether that be a contact form or a booking link straight to a discovery call. So wherever a client could find me, whether it's a YouTube video, I always leave my details in the description below. On Instagram, I make sure that my details are all there. And especially on my website, I have a dedicated contact form where people can inquire about my services and also a booking link directly to a discovery call. And as much as this seems obvious, it's so important that it is very clear and easy for them to contact you. If people find it too difficult they're not going to bother contacting you at all. So make this a very, very easy process for them. So once initial contact has been established, I then want to make sure that we have booked in a discovery call. So I think it's super important to have an initial discussion rather than going back and forth on email. So you know exactly what they need. You can ask them about what pages they need, what features they're looking at, any type of design or style that they like. And you can really get to know them and ask the questions and also be completely transparent with them. Ask them about their budget, tell them about your quotes, just so no questions left unturned. And you also both have a better idea on if you are a good fit or not. So I think that's also very important to know as well, because sometimes their budget might not fit within your services or they might have a different design style to what you usually work with. So it's good to get that out of the way quickly and kind of understand where you guys stand in terms of the work and if you want to proceed or not. It's also a lot easier to establish things verbally. So when it comes to sending off the proposal and contract, then there's nothing surprising. And then it's just a seamless process there on out. So on the discovery call, if everything lines up, if we feel like we're a good fit, if their budget fits my prices, then we can talk about an ideal start date. Once we have that start date, then that allows me to go off and send them everything that they need to begin. So that includes the proposal with everything that we discussed on the discovery call, the contract, and then the invoice. So with the invoice, and this is how I charge depending on how much I'm charging for the specific project, but usually it is 50% deposit upfront and then 50% after the project is completed. So I will send that all over to them and I do this through Dubsado. I find it is so easy to use on my end, but also for the clients. So what happens is they have the proposal of everything outlined. They then click through, send them straight to the contract where they can sign that, click through again, and then they get the link to pay the deposit directly through Dubsado. They just enter their card details and then it is paid for and then I get alerted. So with Dubsado, it makes things so, so easy. I recently actually bought a template to style the whole proposal and contract just because I like things to look really nice. Um, that is completely optional. If you were interested to see what kind of template that I use for my Dubsado, then I will link that down below. I actually really love it. It really elevates the whole process and I find that the client experience is so important to me and I wanna make sure that it's very easy for them, but also make sure it's aesthetically pleasing because they are going through a whole design process after all. So that is just one key thing to mention that the client experience is very important and it's also what's gonna make them refer you to other people afterwards. So once the contract is signed, the deposit is paid, now I'm ready to gather information from them. So what I like to send them is a questionnaire and, and also anything that I might need to start on the website itself. So in terms of questions for the questionnaire, things I ask them are what kind of style that they like, what features are a must have for their website, whether it might be a shoppable Instagram if they're doing e-commerce or if it's certain amount of videos, make sure that they outline those features beforehand. And I also think it's super important to make sure that they send you a list of websites that they currently like, because sometimes it's really hard for clients to put in words what they're actually looking for. So if they send you actual websites that they can go and pick out 
certain things that they like and what they don't like from each site. It makes the process a lot easier and it helps you understand what they like as well, which makes the process a lot more seamless and it makes the revision process go down a lot. So the things I ask for before the start date are things such as any imagery they have that might work for the site, all the pages that are needed for the website, as well as a brief overview of what they want included in each page and also the copy. So sometimes they prefer to do the copy themselves or they hire a copywriter. I also work with copywriters. It completely depends on the client. So sometimes the clients will want me to design the website first and then create the copy after they've seen the design. And sometimes they will give me the copy and they will ask me to design the website around the copy. So it really just depends on the client and what exactly they want, but I'm flexible in whichever way they prefer to work. Also, just to take note, I mentioned that all of the stuff is needed well before start date. And I also mentioned that on the discovery call, just to make sure that they're aware that they need to block time out to prepare the stuff before start date because I can't begin the work without them giving me all of the stuff. So just be very clear that they will need to prepare all of this and they will need to find time to prepare this before they even begin. So once I've got everything, they've sent everything over to me, all looks good, start date has come, I begin working on the website design. So I design all of my websites in Adobe XD. There's also Figma, which I still haven't doubled in. I always say that I'm gonna try it, but I just haven't had the time. And Adobe works well for me. I really, really do like it. So I design all the pages in Adobe XD. If there's any functions or sliders or any of that, I like to build that within Adobe XD but it really depends on the kind of timeline I have for the project. If they wanna see the features and everything before the website development, um, they find it really hard to kind of visualize things. I'll try to incorporate as much as I can of the features into Adobe XD so it is interactive. Otherwise, if it is a tight timeline and they're happy for me just to create the graphic mock-up and I can talk them through the features, how it's gonna look on the actual site, I just do that. So it really depends on the client and the timeline. So the revision process I have with the website design phase is I give them three different revision rounds. So one round includes a list of all the comments they have on the initial design concepts. I will then go and update the website based on the comments they've given me and that will count as one round. So they have three of these rounds and then once that's complete, they're happy with everything, then I go into the web development phase. So something that I haven't mentioned yet is what I like to design and develop on. And this really depends. I know there are so many out there. I have tried a lot of them, but ones that I gravitate towards and the ones that my clients seem to like are Webflow and Show It. So these are mainly for service-based businesses. And when I do e-commerce-based businesses, it's always Shopify. I can't recommend Shopify enough. So much like my design process, my development process also has three rounds of revisions. I try to ask my clients to do the major revisions within the design phase because with the development phase, it takes much longer. So I wanna make sure that the overall website is pretty much the same, but we're tweaking things here and there within the revision process. The development phase is definitely my favorite part. It's when I see everything coming to life, I can add in the features, the interactions, the movements and everything. So it's definitely by far my favorite part, but it does take the longest. So the design process probably takes me around one to two weeks, depending on the project, depending on the client timeline, depending on how many revisions are needed. So it could be longer than that, but usually it's within one to two weeks. Whereas the development phase could take me up to a month, depending also on the project, number of pages, the features required. So it really does vary. It could take me two weeks to a month, it could take me even more than that. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you're quoting a timeline for your client. So once your client is happy with the fully developed site, then you can now go and hand it over to them. So if I am designing in Webflow, then what I will do is have them create their own account and I'll transfer it over to their account. Um, and then they can set up hosting. If they don't know how to do this, which sometimes they don't, I log into their account for them, set up hosting, set up the domain name and they're good to go usually. Sometimes I'll have to help them integrate things like Vimeo, email platform. It really depends what kind of features they're wanting and what they want to integrate within their website. So bear in mind that there are hosting costs, there are costs for things like Vimeo Pro, 
for email platforms and be upfront with them the cost of these things in the very early stages, just so that there is no surprise to them at the end stage that they're gonna have to have these monthly subscription costs. If they are an e-commerce business and I'm building it in Shopify, then I will have developed that in the Shopify development store. And if they're a new store, then I can easily transfer that over to them when they have set up an account or if they have an existing Shopify store, I take the theme that I built and I move that theme over to their current Shopify account. And then I integrate all the collections and products into their new Shopify theme. So once the site has been handed over, I like to do a 30 day maintenance period where if anything happens for some reason, I'm always there to help them to fix it. If they need any minor things changed on the site, I'm happy to help them within that 30 days. And if they wanna continue with the maintenance support, then I do offer that as well for an additional fee. But what I like to do is when I hand over the site, I like to kind of go over everything, go on a video call, kind of share my screen and explain everything to them so that they are fully aware and capable of updating things themselves. And I like to pick platforms that are very easy to use for the client so that they are able to customize things themselves if they need to down the road. They don't need me for that. So that comes to the end of my web design process. I hope you found that useful if you're looking at offering web design as a service. If you have any questions that I missed out, then feel free to leave those down below and I will get back to you. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below and I will see you in my next video.